booktube it's andrea and i'm here with my may wrap up now again as with april i didn't read that many books in may i did read uh nine in total so i'm pleased with that in the summer i tend to it tends to drop off for a few months and then it picks up again so i'm hoping that it'll pick up good soon i don't call it a reading slump because one of the books i read was really big so it's not a slump because i'm always still reading and one of the books took me for ages but more about that when i get to it so the first book I read, or finished reading, was the book I bought, pulled from my TBR jar all the way back in April, and that was Judy With Love, Lorna Smith. I gave this three out of five stars for one reason, and the reason for this is that this is a fan-written biography, so a lot of the things mentioned in here aren't actually 100% accurate. So it's obviously it's done from a fan's point of view, so it's sort of like rose-tinted glasses. However, it is nice always to read a positive account of the life of somebody like Judy Garland, um, a life that's been so overwritten about and exploited and scandalised. It's nice to read something positive, which is why I gave it three. I enjoyed it. I'm glad to have this in my cinema and my Judy Garland book collection. Um, and I'll probably read it again at some point. But it's a very nice and warmly written biography. The next book I read was a ebook so I will put the picture up here and that was called Death in the Bay by Stuart McIntyre. Now I found this book on the free Amazon Kindle books and got it, it was called Death in the Bay and I was like oh it's going to be something like San Francisco but I clicked on it, it's Cardiff. So Cardiff Bay I'm going to want to read it because it's always fun reading about places you know and um, street names and buildings and so they discover bodies on places like the TARDIS jetty because it's where Doctor Who's filled by the Doctor Who experience uh, and various other places that I recognise which is always nice. Now while uh, it was an interesting plot and it tells the story of a retiring police officer a DCI Hobby who has climbed the ranks through the South Wales Police Force and the Glamorgan Police Force only to be given one last very bad murder case. Five bodies over five days are discovered in Cardiff Bay. Um, and the killer is someone he encountered previously, some 20 years before, or 30 years before, 30, yeah, it was in the 80s, when he was a young Bobby on the beat. I liked the idea of the story. I didn't like the ending. I thought it was a, it was a, a nice story. The ending was very rushed and the bad guy gets away with it. So there you are, sport the ending. They don't catch the bad guy. They know who he is, but he escapes before they catch him with some uh, big tragedy at the end. I gave it two stars because it just felt so rushed. It could have been so much better. The, the receive, redeeming qualities were set in Cardiff Bay, so that's always going to be fun. Then I picked up A Storm of Swords, Swords Part 1, uh, Steel and Slow by George R.R. R. Martin. Now, of course, this is... Um, just over half of the book A Storm of Swords which has been split into two for paperback release because it's I mean if you take out the information at the back which is all the houses and there's a lot of those it's actually oh my god 568 pages long just that bit the second half is more or less shorter and I will pick that up soon you don't need me to tell you what this is about you've either read it or you just don't want to know about it personally I loved it I'm Every time I pick up one of these books, I'm enjoying the story more and more. Um, I've still not watched a single episode of the TV series, and I probably won't until after he's finished writing the series, if that ever happens, because he just seems to be caring about the TV series, and where is the next book? It's, you know, they've been waiting, so, I mean, you know, a long time for it, so it's about time we, we had the next one, please. But again, I gave it four, because I did enjoy it very much, so... Uh, then another book I started a few months ago was Lizzie Siddle, The Tragedy of a pre raphaelite Supermodel, which is a biography by Lucinda Hawksley. This tells the true story of Elizabeth Siddell, who was the model for Millet's uh, Ophelia and married to the pre raphaelite um, artist uh, Rossetti. And she killed herself when she was only 32. She was addicted to, oh, I can't pronounce the word. Lan um, laudanum. There you have to look. I have to actually see the words. I was addicted to laudanum, which was a drug that was commonly available back then. As were a lot of drugs. I think it was a, it was an opiate mixed with some sort of something else. Um, 
and it just tells the story of how she rose from being a assistant in a, in, a, in a tailor shop or a dressmaker shop to becoming the model of the Victorian early Victorian era and the pre-Raphaelite age. Heartbreaking, beautiful, so, so sad. I really did enjoy this and I gave it four out of five stars. It was a really, really good biography and I would recommend you pick it up if you're interested because Lizzie Siddall just, just wasn't just a model she was also an artist and a poet in her own right so yeah then I read the book I picked out of my TBR jar last month which was James Rollins The Last Oracle this is what I call an almost like an archaeological thriller type thing an ancient art artifact um nuclear fallout, radiation, murder, history, violence, no sex, no drugs or rock and roll either. Really enjoyed it. Again, it was a four out of five stars book. Oh, I really love these kinds of books. I really do. Sorry, I'm just looking at my list because um, I'm trying to see what the next book is because I don't recognise it. I was like, what's that say? Um, I really enjoyed this and it's actually book five in the Sig Sigma 4 series so I will hopefully be looking to pick up some more of these because, yeah, loved it. I read a play this month. Um, not because I wanted to, but, well, I did want to, but because I'm teching a show at the Dolman. I'm t uh, so I actually read the play The Government Inspector by Nikolai Gogol. Um, which tells the story of a small town where the mayor's corrupt and the, the, all the, the people are a bit corrupt and the traders are complaining and um, an inspector from the government is coming to them to inspect the town to try and get to the body of, bottom of the corruption. However, in the, uh, in the pub or in the, the village inn, the town inn, a young man is staying there who also works for the government but he's just a clerk. However, he is mistaken for the government inspector and they treat him to lots of dinners, put them up in a nice house and also slip him quite a few bribes, only to find out at the end that he's not the government inspector, he was just taking them for a ride. Um, I gave it three out of, of I give it three out of five stars. It's a very good play. Obviously, again, it's better to watch it. The production of the Dolman is extremely, extremely funny and runs from the 13th of June, I believe. It's a it runs from the Tuesday of that week. So yeah, that's not next week, it's the week after. Um, so I will be there backstage doing my deputy stage manager's job. Oh yeah, I like that. Um, but it's very, very funny. Definitely worth going if you're in the Newport area. Please, please come. Uh, so that was that. I also carried on with Missy, The Binge Readers, Stephen King Othong, and read uh, The Drawing of Three, which is part two of the Dark Tower series, um, his epic fantasy western thing. I actually really enjoyed this one much more than I enjoyed the first one. I really felt the plot was starting to come together. I liked the way he kept going back and forward uh, from where his world to our world and to New York to bring through these people to um help him on his quest um, it's a bit bigger than the, the first one but very very enjoyable i will be continuing with reading the, the the dark tower however i have ordered the next two book in the series but they're not in stock and it can take up to three weeks to be delivered so amazon are actually estimating that i won't receive the book until the end book next two books in the series until the end of june that being the case, I will probably start reading it as soon as I get it and just read the two back to, next two back to back. But I will definitely be reading them. I'm really enjoying this series, so I'm glad I picked this up as well. Then the other readathon I've been taking part on is the Terry Pratch Pratchett Memorial Readathon, uh, where we're trying to reread all the Discworlds in one calendar year. This started in March. It's now June. I've read three because of course I've fallen a bit behind but that's okay at least I did read one and they don't take me long I actually read this in a day and that was equal rights literally just sat there one Saturday afternoon and just read the thing from cover to cover and this tells the story of S. Karina Smith who is the daughter of a blacksmith um, who has seven sons and she's the eighth child and he too was no she's the seventh child she has six sons and he too was the seventh son and normally a seventh son of a seventh son becomes a wizard the wizard that is Pat going to pass his power on to Escarina does it without realizing she's a girl and, the, and it's too late this is one of the books with Granny Weatherwax in 
Yay, because we love Granny. Granny takes Escarina under her wing and tries to teach her herdology and uh, to be a witch. And at some point, Escarina decides that she wants to be both a wizard and a witch. She wants to learn everything. And they travel to the Unseen University in Ankh-Morpork to try and get Escarina admitted to the university. And at the end of the book, Escarina becomes the disc's first female wizard. And her and uh, the other chap who's one of the main characters, Simon, invent a whole new uh, branch of magic that nobody other, never, nobody understood except for them. Now I would have liked to have known what happened to Escarina other than that. We never did find out sadly, we never will now. But yes, I love this book and again it's a four, four out of five stars book because it's just fantastic. The final book I read in June was a e-book that I received free from NetGalley in exchange for a fair and honest review. And that was called The Wardrobe Mistress, Mistress, I can't even say it, by Patrick McGrath. And this tells the story of a woman named Joan Grice, who's very, who it starts off at her husband's funeral, he's died, um, and he was a famous actor, and she is a wardrobe mistress. Um, a young actor named Frank a stone takes over his part as Mavolio in, in Twelfth Night and oh, I think it's that anyway I'm not really with it today um she sees him play Frank Stone play the character exactly the way her husband did so she thinks it's his ghost come back um his spirit has come back in this body to stay with her they have a brief affair she has a daughter named Vera who is also an actress and she's about to appear in a production of the Duchess of Malfi so there's all this stuff about theatre which is absolutely fantastic I really love that part of the storytelling but the story was so slow it took forever to get going I'm not joking it's taken me most most of the month to read this and normally I read Kindle books really really quickly but I found it so hard going. During the book <clears throat> we found out that her husband Charlie Grice was actually, I mean it's set just after the Second World War, was a fascist, he was a black shirt so he supported the cause against the Jewish, He, you know, and uh, they are trying to bring that uh, back, they're trying to have fascist meetings. What is um, controversial is that Joan is actually Jewish, not, you know, so he is a supporter of Hitler and the Hitler regime, even though they've been overturned and gone and we're now into, nine, in, into the late 40s, but his wife was a Jew, so you've got all that um, confrontation and confusion for Joan to understand how he married me, but yet he was again, he hated the Jews, how could that be? So there's a lot that goes on in this book, but it is very, very slow. The theatre parts were very, very well researched, very, very enjoyable, really liked it. But because of the slowness, it I, I almost gave up on it several times. I did want to finish reading it so I could write a proper review for NetGalley, but it was hard going. And in the end, I could only give it two out of three stars. It was okay. Maybe the formatting in the, in the NetGalley galley wasn't that good and that probably didn't help. But it was just so slow, which is a shame, so I hate to end on a downer, but yeah, it wasn't that good. But his characterizations, Patrick McGrath's characterizations, were very good. His writing style is just very slow. Um, maybe if I read it again or I read something else of his, I'd start to like that style, I don't know, but two for that one. So that's what I read in May, we're now in June, yay, it's my birthday month. I have to pull out another one of these because I'm still trying to get through my huge piles of books in the other room. I have too many books. I have over a hundred physical books and I have almost, well I have over a thousand Kindle books but those ones are mostly free so I don't care if I don't read them then that's why I don't haul them. So we're just going to give this a shake. I'm just going down a little bit. And because I don't like to pick from the top, I like to move it around. I'm going to go with this orange one. I'm treading what it's going to be because it could be anything. Obviously, anything that's on the TBR pile. Oh, no. What was that? The it fell off. I can't even get this one open. And this one is... The Girl with the Tra Ooh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson, which has been on the, the bedside table for ages. Uh, my other half bought that, started it, didn't like it, thought I might like it because it's my sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I will quite happily pull that off and give it a go. So that is on, like I said, I'm not really doing a TBR because I'm so slow at reading at the moment. But 
didn't work last time. I still got half that pile. I still got a few of those books left on the side. So, but I will pull this one off of the shelf, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and we will read that in June. So that's what I have read this month. What have you been reading? Have you read anything of, that I've read? Do you agree with me with anything? Do you have different opinion? Did you read The Wardrobe Mistress and like it? If so, tell me why. What did I miss? Um, what else have you read that I've read this month? Let me know what you think down in the comments below and don't forget to share, like and subscribe and I'll be back soon with another video of some description. See you all soon booktube. Bye!